All right, it's the top of the hour, so why don't we go ahead and get started. I want to welcome you to this tutorial about five ways to generate leads. Now, I have been helping financial services professionals acquire doctor clients for the past decade, and never have I seen such profound changes. I think that the COVID pandemic and what's happened as a result of the pandemic has really opened up new ways for us to reach out to people who want to receive what we have to offer. I can tell you that really the focus today is on um, digital and virtual things, things that might be new to you. I don't like to bring you anything that I haven't already tested myself. And I will tell you that my own business tripled in 2020. And a lot of it has to do with some of these very ideas that I'm bringing to you, but I'm not the only one who's benefiting from them. Um, here's a text that I got this week from one of my private coaching clients. Um, she and her husband um, run a business that offer tax strategies for doctors. And I just got this text, hi, sorry for the lack of communication. We hired an assistant for her husband and I'm training her and now we're hiring a sales team. Um, usually we have 80 conversations a month, but we did 60 conversations in a week. She actually turned the ads off. Now they had contacted me because they were already involved with Facebook advertising. But what they were finding is that as they poured more money into the Facebook ads, they weren't seeing a jump in the number of doctors who signed up for consultations. So after four months of work, you know, things just started exploding for them. And I am seeing more and more financial advisors, not who are struggling, because I definitely see that, but more and more financial services professionals who are really taking that next quantum leap. And that is what this is about today. So if you're wondering, you know, how do I get past the gatekeeper? How do I inspire doctors to meet with me? Or how do I inspire doctors to take action? You are in the right place, because today what we're really going to do is talk about some of the new opportunities and you know how they might be able to help you grow also. Uh, so since a lot of you have known me, you know my story very briefly and I'm just gonna do it real, real quickly. I did not start out in life as a financial services professional or as a marketing coach. I actually was working on a PhD in physics when I Fainted on my way to the bathroom one day. I had internal bleeding. By the time the doctors got into my pelvis, about half of my blood volume was there. I thought this was the end. I was so grateful to be alive that I decided I was going to become a doctor and save other people's lives like my own had been saved. Um, I ran a private practice in Seattle, primarily as a breast surgeon. Um, became a mom and had a plan. My office manager was gonna take care of my son. And um, my son was diagnosed with broad spectrum developmental delay. So I decided to take a leap from my practice. I generated revenue by helping um, in medical malpractice lawsuits. And um, after a year, my son was retested, booted out. He's a perfectly healthy person whose brain was just maturing on its own calendar. And uh, so in 2000, I asked myself the question, like, what am I going to do? And I thought, well, what if I start a business helping doctors and patients collaborate more effectively to get better medical outcomes? And I thought, this is going to be awesome. You know, I'm going to make more money than I did as a surgeon. But I really struggled. I hired mentors and, and coaches and often just kind of felt like an alien. Well, one day I went to speak over in Europe and went to plug in my laptop. But of course, you can't plug it in directly because Europe is wired differently than the US. And I thought, you know, this, this is what's going on. This is my problem. I am wired differently than business-minded people. And if I could only create this adapter, I would get better results. And I did, and I did. Um, so, you know, I've had the great honor of delivering keynote addresses at national meetings, of regularly being quoted in the press and writing any number of books. And I don't say this to boast, but rather to make the point 
that my value was exactly the same before and after. I figured out how to create this adapter. What was different is that I had a better understanding of my buyer and how to push the buy button, right? So if you have struggled engaging doctors, my guess is that you might have the same challenge that I had when I first, as a doctor, tried to engage in the business community. You might just need that adapter to help you get a different business outcome. All right, well, my story goes on. So I'm, I've got this business that's going, then 2008 rolls around. And I'm hearing about more and more doctors with their financial struggles. And I started thinking, well, gee, you know, maybe I'm not the only doctor who has a dysfunctional relationship with money. So I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of doctors, and I've summarized my findings in two books, The Myth of the Rich Doctor and The Nine Money Mistakes That Doctors Make. Please feel welcome to download these in the handout section. Um, this will not only give you some insight, about doctors and their relationship with money, but you can also see how I talk with doctors about money. And please feel welcome to sort of to borrow some uh, pages from my playbook, and you might want to think about how you incorporate some of these ideas as you too are working with doctors. But anyway, so you know, here are these doctors with all these money problems, and believe me, I am not the person to be helping them. But what I am interested, as you probably are, is making a big difference. And so what is my high leverage move? Well, I thought, what if I could groom a community of financial services professionals who are really committed to making a difference with doctors and help them understand how to engage with doctors? Um, I could, I just saw, you know, like this big community of, of doctors who were more empowered and financial services professionals who were more successful. So I have been doing this for a decade. I believe in offering evidence-based results. And I, you know, I'm just always tickled to be getting the text, to be getting the emails. I mean, I, I'm working with a financial services professional in Singapore. She just uh, emailed me with the exciting news that she made it to the million dollar round table this year. So it's really exciting to see me getting results, but this is not about me, this is really about you. Okay, so what I would like to do now is talk about the five major trends that we have seen in 2020 that will impact your ability to engage doctors I'd like to offer you some specific marketing campaigns that you might think about launching. So think about, you know, going to a buffet and I'm just gonna lay out the dishes, right? Um, we're not gonna talk about how to do it. I'm just gonna show you some ideas and that might inspire some ideas for you. So as we talk about lead generation activity, marketing campaign, sales funnels, let me just define the nomenclature as I use these words. So ultimately what you'd like to do is you'd like to meet a doctor, build a relationship, and get doctors to say yes to you when you pop the question, doctor, are we a good fit? All right, I think that there is a complete metaphor with dating because a doctor is going to form a long-term relationship with you. Um, they are going to open their financial kimono and very few people actually know a doctor's financial truth, maybe a handful. I mean, their partners might not even know their financial truth. So doctors want to work with experts. They don't want to just work with salespeople. And so um, it's important that doctors can trust you, but once they put their trust in you, you're gonna have a doctor client for life. So in essence, practice building is sort of like the process of dating, right? And so we're gonna talk about lead generation, how to get a doctor 
who doesn't even know your name to pay attention to you and to build that relationship with you. So I'm going to show you some marketing campaigns. And think of a marketing campaign as a date. It's something that goes on your to-do list. It's something that you offer. But I just want to let you know that if you, you know, just focused on like how to get a first date, you probably wouldn't go on and, you know, find that special person. So the sales funnel is a series of engagements. It's like the dating process. So know that even if you find a lead generation system to lead to the results that you want to get more doctor clients, what you might want to think about is these series of events. So you don't have to just have one lead generation system. I would recommend though that um, once you do find the lead generation system, that marketing campaign, you find something that really works well. And then think about that as being the mouth of a funnel in which you think about what you do on the second date, third date, fourth date, and fifth date. And just to make it completely simple, um, I would suggest that as you're thinking about your business plan for 2020, you get to the point where you have one lead generation system that works really well, and then the commitment to send out regular yummy treats, regular pearls of wisdom on a weekly or an every other week basis. And with each communication, you have a little button that says click here for an appointment. And each of your regular communications offers a call to action, a reason to call you. So what caused me to triple my traffic and my business last year? Well, believe it or not, for 2000, I delivered a webinar every single week. I invested in Facebook ads and um, I those ads would invite people to sign up for my webinar. I did a sales webinar so that the webinar was designed for my prospects to take the next step with me. This is all I did. It was very simple. It kind of cut through the clutter. I experimented with a lot of other things that I am gonna show you this week. But ultimately, I think the breakthrough result was about simplification. It was about eliminating the things that really were the distraction, figuring out what my true value was, and then just having a simple system that I knew what to do every single day, every single week, every single month. And as you listen to these things, I really invite you to think about that simplification strategy. Okay, so let's launch right in. How is physician engagement different right now? And I'm going to um, share with you, again, these five major trends that are going to impact your ability to acquire doctors in 2021, and then show you how each of these trends can lead to a, a logical um, lead generation system. Okay, so the big picture, of course, is the COVID pandemic. Um, and uh, this has had impacts on all of us. There is so much uncertainty about what the future will bring for all of us. But one way in which this has impacted doctors is that they are putting their lives on the line every day. Unfortunately, there are physicians, nurses, healthcare professionals, frontline workers who are losing their lives to COVID-19. Um, if you are um, in the protection industry, you will also know that most doctors are underinsured. You know, um, if a doctor is an employee, they probably have life insurance as part of their benefits package. 
but it's often not great life insurance coverage. There are huge numbers of especially dentists who do not carry any disability insurance. Um, so with this real threat of you know, potential loss of income, um, I think it really makes sense to go out there and offer a second opinion about life and disability protection. Um, this is real for doctors in ways that it's never been before. I think most doctors have the idea that, you know, we're invulnerable. Disease happens to other people. But it, um, we're, you know, we're protected. I think that the COVID pandemic has really helped doctors understand in a new way that they are not invulnerable. You know, there's a lot of doctors who might have purchased their life insurance policy, you know, 10, 20 years ago, and things are changing now. And, you know, it's kind of embarrassing if your ex-wife is still the beneficiary of your life insurance policy. So just going in and offering a, a second opinion is a way that has been successful. Now, I'm a big contrarian, right? I'm gonna talk a lot about digital marketing because that's where everything is going. But I just wanna remind you that sometimes going against the stream works really well. So yes, um, digital outreach is much more cost effective, but one great way of standing out is using US mail. This is a highly successful tool. Yes, it is more expensive. And I'm hoping that you are really um, managing your practice by the numbers. So ideally, you know what the lifetime value of a single doctor client is. You know what the cost of lead generation is. And you want to make smart choices. So for the first time, I am investing in Facebook ads, right? And I was um, originally getting leads for about $5 a lead. That price jumped up to about $50 a lead in October when, um, when there was lots of competition for political advertising. Um, so, you know, there, there are campaigns that you make investments in that you don't always have control over, but you do know how much it would cost to send out a letter by US mail. And there are very creative ways of generating lists. You can certainly buy lists, but you can also hire virtual assistants, you know, in the Philippines for $4 an hour. And, you know, you can Google, you know, the names of gastroenterologists and have somebody create your own mailing list. So, you know, always be thinking about creative ways of doing things. Okay, the second big trend that we are seeing are doctors who are facing financial challenges. So think about what we have done with this COVID pandemic. Our major therapeutic intervention has been flattening the curve. The social distancing um, is intended to decrease the number of cases that we are seeing in any given community at any time. And why is that? We don't want the demand for healthcare resources to outstrip the supply. And part of the way that hospitals and clinics deal with surges is by shutting down elective cases, right? So that the vents aren't used for, you know, uh, an elective breast augmentation. Instead, it's used for a COVID patient. Well, these elective cases are the engines that drive profitability for hospitals, for clinics, for individual physicians. And in April of last year, the Mayo Clinic projected a $3 billion shortfall. And they responded to this with across the board pay cuts. Um, so doctors have seen wild things happen this past year. Um, you know, no doctor employee ever expected that they would ever see a 10 to 20% pay cut. The high earning doctors in private practice 
never ever expected that they would see a 70 to 90 percent reduction in their income. Now I'm a surgeon by training. I'm still a fellow of the American College of Surgeons and I have been absolutely shocked to observe what I have seen this year. You know, the American College of Surgeons really assumed a leadership position. They um, convened a practice protection committee. So how are doctors actually going to make it through this? And you might have been on the watch party that I hosted. They actually had a webinar, Economic Survival Strategies for Surgeons. Now, you as a business person understand that there are business cycles. You have seen downturns before. But doctors do not have the business training. In order to deal with these things, we just never expected something like this to happen. And so, you know, previously, half of doctors um, were working with professional financial advisors. Only half of them felt that they were on track for retirement. And now with all of this financial turbulence, you know, doctors are just really feeling over their heads. So one of the most popular doctor side groups on Facebook is physician side gigs, right? So how am I going to pay the mortgage? How am I going to pay the college tuition when I don't have any control about when patients are going to come in for their elective hip replacement? So as you talk with your own doctors, you might find that they're interested in things like passive income through real estate investing. So there's an anesthesiologist in Los Angeles whose name is Peter Kim. Um, he has launched this entire initiative, Passive Revenue for Doctors. You can go and check him out. Um, and he has a huge following. He just offered a $1,500 course for doctors about passive investing in real estate. And there were 6,000 doctors who signed up for this course. So this idea of, you know, how do I diversify my revenue is absolutely huge among doctors, which leads to a couple of ideas about marketing campaigns that you can launch. Okay, one of the things that I am exploring right now um, is lead generation through quizzes. And why am I looking in this direction? Well, it's because people love quizzes. They have an endless curiosity about learning more about themselves. You might have taken quizzes. Now, developing a good quiz is kind of hard because you know, this has got to be something with true insights. This has to be something that doctors want to learn more about. And, you know, you don't want somebody to go through a quiz and sort of say, thank you, Captain Obvious. So I'm working on a couple of quizzes right now. You might have gone through my pain personality quiz that I sent out in the announcement for this webinar. Um, but Another one that I think really aligns with what's going on right now is what kind of doctor entrepreneur are you? So, you know, a lot of doctors are thinking, yeah, side gigs, that's really great, but where do I get started? Like, I don't know anything about business. I don't know anything about entrepreneurship. So this quiz will identify the four kinds of doctor entrepreneurs and then lead to some ideas about, you know, if you're this kind of doctor entrepreneur, here are some side gigs that you might want to think about. So get ready because I'm almost ready to launch this. So imagine if you could license this kind of quiz, um, you could offer it to your list of doctors and invite other doctors to do it. You could potentially do what I'm doing and run a Facebook ad that would invite doctors to take this quiz, or maybe you even go to the administrators of some of the um, some of the Facebook groups that attract doctors, like Peter Kim's group, the Physician Side Gig group, and say, "Hey, would you like to put this quiz on on your group and see how it helps doctors?" So. Would a quiz fit into your um, 
into your lead generation system. I am also on the um, final manuscript pages of my next book, um, The Doctor Entrepreneurial Path, How to Profitly Build Your Practice, Launch Your Side Gig, or Generate Passive Income. And I just mock that up and I see an extra I in income. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of financial advisors are finding that putting their names on my book is the, the skeleton of a great marketing campaign because it helps with expert positioning. Um, they've been offering this book digitally. Um, I offer webinars around this content. So having your name tied to something that is proven to engage doctors has real value. Now, one of the marketing campaigns that you might think about doing is writing your own book especially if you have some really unique intellectual property. There are all sorts of ways about um, putting your name on a book that somebody else has already written. I have a little concerns about the integrity of doing something like this. And, you know, when I offer financial advisors the opportunity to um, put their name on my book, it says specifically that they are writing a forward and an afterward. So I think part of the reason that these books have worked so well for financial advisors is that, well, first of all, you've got your name tied to the name of a nationally noted physician, and you know the most influential person in a doctor's life is another doctor. But plus having your name on the cover of a book, like even if the doctor never reads the book, um, just sets you apart. It reinforces your expert positioning. Okay, so books are another way that you can sort of tap into this trend. Um, the next thing that has worked really, really well is deliver webinars. And I know that at least one person who's attending right now is in my webinar masterclass, where we're talking about how to design and promote webinars so that doctors sign up, show up, and step up and take action. So webinars are very, very effective. You know, doctors want to learn. Um, and now with all of the in-person medical meetings being canceled, you know, doctors are more um, on, on tune and resonating with this idea that webinars can be virtual. So if you go to any medical association, you're gonna be finding lots and lots of webinars. And so with the right webinar, there's a possibility that you might actually get an association to invite you um, to deliver a webinar on their platform, or you can host your own webinar. Um, and this is this can be really highly successful. I told you that my one webinar was the thing that contributed to my business success in 2020. So if you can fine tune a webinar for doctors, this could transform your results. Now, this isn't just a slam dunk. There are elements that have to be done correctly. You know, plus, you know, if you've never done a webinar before, there can be a lot of things to overcome, right? All of the technology, how do you promote it? And for that reason, I've started doing some done for you webinars. So I've got webinars that I know work. And, you know, one thing that you can do is basically we could collaborate together and um, I would give you a script to introduce me. So basically, I would deliver the bulk of the webinar. We would design a call to action that you wrap up with, and I would take care of the entire back end. So now you've got an on-demand webinar that you can promote and use like any other digital sales tool. Um, let me also say that 
there's been a lot of political instability, right? You know, the truth is, no matter what you think about Trump, and I'm not going to share my own opinions, but he has been good for business. And while some doctors are struggling, I will tell you that the more entrepreneurial doctors are having a great year. So, you know, there's some question about what will President Biden mean for the economy? What will President Biden mean for taxes? And, you know, most doctors, quite honestly, are paying too much in taxes. And so, you know, getting a really smart tax strategist on your team, somebody who can come in and show doctors how they can reduce their taxes by, you know, tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars. That has a lot of value. You know, the the um, email that I started out with, the text that I got, um, with all of these conversations that they're having with doctors, basically that's their value promise, um, how to lower taxes. I think that a lot of business-minded people are, are concerned about this. So I think that this is a really great hook that you can use. Okay, next trend that we're seeing is virtual relationship building. So you might have seen your own doctor with a telehealth visit in this past year. Now this technology has been around for over a decade. Why hasn't it been an option before? Well, part of it is the doctors didn't know how they were gonna get paid for that. But in the midst of the COVID pandemic, the insurance companies solved that problem by offering doctors compensation for telehealth visits. And doctors are getting some experience with it right now, and they're finding that it works. I mean, whoever imagined that we could safely diagnose and treat patients virtually? And so they're seeing that virtual relationship building really does work. Well, what does this mean for you? You might have the belief that you need to get knee to knee with the doctor in order to build relationships with them. And so you might have tried to you know, have your prospecting area within a, an hour or two drive from where you are. But now that we're building relationships virtually, as we used to say in the operating room, the whole world is pre-op. So the whole US potential or even world is potentially your prospecting area. Um, so are, are you using this? Do you have the skills? to build relationships virtually. Um, and if so, how well is that working for you? So one marketing campaign um, that you might wanna use to tap into this is starting to create videos and specifically podcasts. I think podcasts really are the next sleeper technology. You already know about the power of video. And I hope that as you're talking with your prospects, you're, you're getting them on Zoom calls so that um, you're engaging more senses. This is really key with virtual relationship building. The more senses that you can engage, the better. However, if you look at the way that doctors consume educational content, a lot of doctors want to get educated as they're exercising or as they are commuting. And podcasts are becoming huge. Now, you may or may not have heard much about them, but this probably has the biggest growth. I personally have launched a podcast myself. You might have seen this through the Academy of Physician Engagement. And it feels a little overwhelming, right? Like, how do I do this? What about all the technology? Um, but I can tell you that from my experience of launching it, it's really easy to hire a virtual assistant who can help you with this. The technology is not really that overwhelming. You know, I've got a my little podcasting mic um, and I've got some, um, video editing or some editing software right on my Mac, but you can hire somebody to do that. Um, probably the biggest question that you might have is, well, 
can I get this through compliance? Will they allow me to do this? And like, what would I talk about? I don't wanna have to create all of this content. So one little hack that I have for you is maybe what you do is you just invite doctors to tell their stories of success. You know, what are doctors doing to thrive in these times of the COVID pandemic? So why might you wanna do that? Well, first of all, now this gets you in conversation with the key physician opinion leader. Doctors have pretty big egos. You know, most doctors would want to be interviewed. So this is a great way of getting a yes from a doctor. Um, then you could potentially transcribe the podcast. Um, you could even package it nicely to give to the doctors so they can share it with their own community. Because if you were interviewed, what would you do? You would share it with your community, right? So if you can help a doctor be even more successful, if you can be the guy or gal who's talking with these key physician opinion leaders, that makes you more attractive. But you can even take that to the next step. Let's say that you interviewed one doctor a month or one doctor every other week. Um, you could potentially have standard questions like, doctor, what do you know now that you wish you would have known at the beginning of your career? And so they're going to give you their own pearls of wisdom. What if you created a little sort of coffee table book that featured one doctor and what they knew now that they wish they had known then? Okay, so this would be really, really easy to do, right? You'd get a doctor's permission to do this. You would maybe hire somebody who could create sound bites around doctor's ideas. You get a picture of the doctor, and then you just create a book with this. Now, this is a great way that you have your own book in a very easy and fun way to do. Once you create it, maybe you give each doctor who, whom you feature, you know, 10 to 20 copies of the book, but this then becomes one of your yummy treats that you go out to other doctors with. Okay, number four, um, doctors are social. So doctors love private clubs. You know, they love going to medical meetings and having conversations around the water cooler, around the coffee carafe, but we're not doing that anymore. But we still want to get together. You know, we still want to network with people who are in our tribes. And right now, doctors are very social. You know, five years ago, um, when people said, well, should I be on LinkedIn? I would say, well, maybe, but you know, there's a special LinkedIn for doctors called Doximity. And generally, that's where doctors gather. So you want to find out you know, where are doctors? And um, we have seen a radical change in this past year. More and more doctors are on LinkedIn, but here is the big surprise, or at least it was for me. More and more doctors are on Facebook and Instagram. Like who would have imagined, right? But, um, if you are not already on Facebook or Instagram, I invite you to at least take a look and see about doctor's presence there. So you can just take your own doctor client list and you know go in and do a search on Instagram, on LinkedIn, um, on Facebook, and see if they are there. How active do they appear to be? And then the question is, is this the time for you to start investing your resources with your social media presence? Now, here's the deal, and I'm probably not telling it you anything that you don't already know. Social media can be a huge time sink, right? So if you decide that you want to use social media as a lead generation tool. I think that you need to do this in a very, very smart way. And you know, one of the smart ways that you can do this 
is um, with Facebook advertising or being very strategic, like approaching the administrator of Dr. Facebook groups. Um, I am not sure how much you want to invest sort of building your own community on Facebook because that's sort of a long haul. Um, some people find that it's worth it, but most of the people that I have helped with say, you know, this really doesn't work very well. Um, more and more doctors are on LinkedIn. So again, I think that you can go and see if the doctors that you want are in fact on LinkedIn. I personally made an investment in a service called Copilot AI. And what they will do is use a computer algorithm to reach out and form more connections through second degree connections. And um, I will tell you that this has been working. I actually have been able to make more connections. But, you know, there's this question about how do you connect the dots between making a connection with a doctor on LinkedIn and um, actually, um, you know, building a business relationship, getting a doctor on a call with you. Now, sometimes LinkedIn can be really helpful um, for dipping into other buckets of leads. So that there are three buckets of leads. There's family, friends, and fans, people who already know, like, and trust you. There are the power partners. These are the people who have lists of doctors. So this might be um, the executive director of a medical association or somebody who does outsource um, medical billing for doctors or somebody who helps doctors buy commercial real estate. Um, so you can reach out to these people on LinkedIn, even if you find that your doctors are not on LinkedIn. And, um, and then build a relationship with them. See how you can, you know, actually help them achieve what they want to do by um, doing what you do. And um, then there are the doctor information seekers. So this is kind of what a lot of these marketing campaigns are about. Doctors don't know you, but they're out on the internet trying to find answers to their questions, solutions to their problems. So if you have real intelligence about what it is that doctors really want and need, then you have a much better chance of engaging them. And I think that a habit that I would really invite you to do is just to talk more to doctors. Ask them, how are you doing? You know, what are your biggest challenges today? Because these challenges are varying. And as long as we're talking about challenges, let me just talk about that as really the fifth trend here. So in 2019, before we'd even heard of COVID, we knew that there was an epidemic of burnout among doctors. Uh, in the previous year, about 40% of doctors reported that they had experienced toxic stress in the past year. They were burned out. They didn't want to go to work. And as I look at the bigger picture of how the COVID pandemic has impacted all of us, it's sort of like it's sucked the joy and laughter out of life. You know, we just went through the holidays. How was that for you to not be able to gather together with your family in the same way? You know, even relationships with kids, it's not fun anymore because a lot of parents are in the position of um, taking on the job of being, you know, sort of the surrogate teacher. So I think that this leads to a natural opportunity to connect with doctors by adding joy and laughter. So, you know, the model of client appreciation events, can you bring that to doctors? Can you actually use this as a way of engaging doctors? And here's how you can frame it to family, friends, and fans, people you know. Um, Everyone wants to do nice things for doctors, right? Because they know that it is very difficult for doctors. So you can just go out and announce to people in your community, you know, literally your family, friends, and fans, the people you sent 
holiday notes too. Hey, look, you might not know this about me, but I'm really dedicated to serving the doctors who serve the community. As you know, doctors are working really hard. Well, we wanna add some joy to doctor's life, so we're hosting a special event for them. And there are all sorts of fun things that you can do for doctors. I did a podcast about this. This was one of my first uh, podcasts that I did. Um, so you could do an online cooking course. You could do some virtual travel event. Believe it or not, there are financial advisors who are getting people to show up to play games online. So any way that you could just add joy and laughter to doctors, these are great things to do. Maybe you wanna do this once a month. You know, we were hoping that our isolation would end sometime in the near future, but who knows when we're actually gonna be getting out and getting back together with friends. So maybe you do one of these a month. Um, so, you know, all of these ideas, I, I hope that you found something that you sort of said, hmm, that sounds kind of interesting. Okay, so here are five ways that um, are gonna help you launch these lead generation events. Um, this is what successful advisors do. Um, you know, the, the advisors that I'm working with who are really having a breakthrough year all do these things. So first they harness the power of a story. So when you're promoting a marketing campaign, when you're, when you're launching a lead generation event, tell stories in your copy, right? Um, tell before and after stories. Tell about a doctor who was struggling before they met you and now they're really doing well. I mean, if you watch TV and you look at any exercise product or weight loss product, you know, one of the really compelling things is social proof, literally before showing a before and after picture. And you can paint these before and after pictures and then talk about how this lead generation thing that you're offering helps them get there. Next, harness the power of peers and influencers. So remember, doctors behave like tropical fish. They all tend to um, gather together and move together under the same direction. And remember, your end game is to become the go-to guy or go-to gal among these groups because that's how you really become successful. When doctors are talking about you and passing your name around, but to be remarked upon, of course, it helps to be remarkable. And one thing that can really help you is having a physician evangelist on your team. You know, somebody to open up the red velvet curtain. So, you know, that's why the podcast with doctor interviews can be so good. If you're delivering webinars, I highly recommend that you have a doctor on the webinar with you. It doesn't necessarily have to be me. You know, you might have somebody in your circles who's a physician who is a professional speaker who would be willing to join you and partner with you. You might want to consider having an advisory board who, with whom you can vet your um, lead generation campaigns. Get their ideas because once they offer you the ideas, now they're co-creators. And then you can ask them, okay, how are we gonna get the word out? And they're gonna have a much stronger incentive to pass along your events to their own, um, their own inner circles. Next, harness the power of place. So if we think about practice building, like the process of going out fishing, you know, the kind of doctor that you want to reach is kind of like the kind of fish that you want to catch. Um, the um, marketing message, you know, the thing that you're actually promoting with your lead generation is some, kind of like your bait and tackle. So you wanna have actual evidence that this is something that doctors really want. Um, and, you know, make sure that you're avoiding messages that you as an expert know that doctors need, but doctors don't actually want, because remember, doctors have a phenomenal way 
of um, ignoring messages that they don't want to receive. So, you know, if and when doctors start going to meetings again, physically being there, and there's all sorts of ways that you can do that is important. But now where are the virtual places that doctors are gathering? And you want to be there too. So whether it is, you know, some kind of virtual online committee, um, whether it's a blog, whether it is somebody who, um, does a podcast for doctors, maybe you can be a guest on their podcast. Um, whatever it is, think bigger, right? Don't just think about getting the next doctor client. As my mentor once told me, think about the fifth sale first. So think about how you can leverage your time by bringing your message, not to just one doctor, but to many, many doctors. And last, they harness the power of perseverance. So I've gone to my top financial advisors and I said, look, let's look at your top 10 doctors and let's rewind time and ask, you know, how many contacts did you have with that doctor before they finally became your client? And I was expecting a curve um, to the right. You know, we know from the pharmaceutical industry that um, drug reps have to expose doctors to a um, marketing message between seven and 10 times before doctors' prescribing habits change. And they are the experts on influencing doctors' um, buying choices, if you will. Um, but the big surprise, which shouldn't have been a surprise, was there was another hump um, around zero or one. Okay, those doctors. Um, became clients when another doctor said, hey, you should see my guy. So that's when they were established as a go-to guy or go-to gal. Now that you know this, I would begin your marketing campaign with the end in mind, with the end of wanting to really make this the, the major way in which doctors come to you. But you don't just start there, right? You start, um, with the bigger curve. Okay, well, if you know that you have to have these multiple contacts, then it just makes sense to set up these digital sales funnels. Okay, so again, the sales funnel is a series of encounters that a doctor will have with you to walk this uh, medical marketing labyrinth, right? To have them get those seven to 10 contacts with you. So my strong recommendation is that you just plan on having a regular outreach campaign. Once every other week, you send out something that doctors want to receive. You don't have to create this content. You can curate it, right? But what's important is that doctors really want to receive it so that they will open your emails. A digital sales funnel just means that it all happens over the internet so that you don't actually have to have the contact. And last, harness the power of expert positioning. So, you know, what's the metaphor for an expert? Oh, they wrote the book. So, you know, think about how you too can position yourself as an expert. You know, think about how you can get your name on the cover of a book. You know, maybe it's something like, you know, just getting the top tips from the leading experts among the groups of doctors you were hoping to reach. You know, all of my books are available for you to create a custom package where you're putting your name on the front cover, the back cover. We're helping you write a forward with your signature story and then the afterward with a logical um, next step. So put yourself in the epicenter of the success triad. You know, master expert positioning, master your digital sales funnel, and have a doctor um, on your team, you know, by your side. Let a doctor help you open doors. And ultimately the big tip is show you help doctors by actually helping doctors. All right, so, um, you know, undoubtedly you've got dreams, you've got hopes and aspirations for 2021. 
I am hoping that this tutorial offered you some ideas, some thoughts about you know, what you might want to add as a lead generation campaign. And I really get how hard you work. I really get how hard it is to take that first step and to grab a doctor's attention. But if you do it, um, you know, your business results really can transform. So think in terms of systems. Um, okay, so I would be, as my mentor said, criminally negligent if I didn't just share with you some ways that I might be able to help. I know that not all of you want to be exposed to a promotional message, but um, before I go there, I just want to give you the opportunity to ask any questions that you might have about the content that I presented. And then I'm going to unveil to you some, um, some new ways that I'm helping financial advisors because I'm always thinking about new ways to help. All right. So please, anything that you want to ask, it can be about this. It can be anything about engaging doctors. All right, I just wonder if I asked that question in the right way. Okay, so if you've been part of my community for any length of time, you know that what my brand is about is helping you get business results, right? Helping you get more doctor clients. And the three legs of the stool are courses, coaching, and content. So for the past decade, I've been offering a course called the Cracking the Physician Code course. I have completely updated this so that it completely aligns with what's going on in the COVID world. So this is still available as an on-demand course. And if you've already invested in the course, you have a lifetime of access to the update. So you now have access to this course also. I am also offering a live virtual bootcamp, um, February 16th, 17th, and 18th. So we'll be working, we'll be getting together during the days, and then there will be office hours at night for three days. And this is really what you need to do on a systems level in order to achieve success, to get to that end point of being the go-to guy or gal among doctors. Okay, number two, um, coaching. I have coaching packages anywhere from sort of laser coaching to help you prepare for a specific opportunity. I've got six month packages. And then I've got that big enchilada, you know, one year package where I, in essence, become part of your team. You get access to basically all of the resources I have developed. So that is sort of the elite package. And then I also have content. So I'm regularly creating things for doctors. And um, so this is content that you can just license. All of it can be either digital or physical. Um, you can just get the generic version of these things or you can customize it. Okay, but here is my big thought and I am actually interested in your feedback about this. So I am thinking about launching this digital sales funnel in a box because I have just observed like real people trying to, you know, navigate in this world. I mean, most of us would rather just be in the trenches helping doctors, right? And the technology can feel overwhelming. The organization can get a little overwhelming. So I challenge myself, is there like a fast, easy way that I can help you do this? And so here's my vision. It's to get to the epicenter of the success triad really quickly. Okay, so the backbone for this is the book, The Nine Money Mistakes That Doctors Make, and we will create a custom version for you, again, with, you know, 
your name on the front cover, back cover, your picture, a, a doctor-friendly bio. I will help you create a forward with your signature story that will help you craft. You can use that in all of your marketing materials and a call to action. So you will get two digital versions of this. One, the complete digital book, and the second with the digital book, just through the first chapter, with a statement, if you like this, there's more. Go here to sign up. Okay, so why did we do that? Well, you could potentially get an executive director of a medical association to send your book out to their entire list in the spirit of service. But what you really want is to capture the email address. So if you don't give them everything, if you just give it to them through the first chapter, now you have a way of getting an email address, right? Um, I've also created an audio version of the book. Okay, so there are nine money mistakes plus an intro um, plus a close. Okay, remember we talked about these nine touch points, these seven to nine touch points. Well, each of these audio files can potentially be one of those touch points. So I'll also give you an email swipe file so that you now have something to actually send out through your digital sales funnel. Um, you'll get 50 physical copies of the book and the ability to order more of them. Um, at my cost, and then ideas about how to leverage this book to get in front of more doctor prospects. So you'll get an entire blueprint. In addition, you will get coaching. And, you know, of course, the, this is just obvious. You know, now you've got me as your doctor opening up the red velvet robe. In addition, um, we will create um, a webinar webinar done for you package. So we will get together and create an on-demand webinar. You will get the marketing content for it. We'll create a landing page and promotional copy for you, and we'll take care of the entire back end. So we will give you a list of doctors who have signed up. We will give you the email. We will host the webinar, and we will basically show you how you can use this webinar as a marketing tool. So clearly this is sort of labor intensive. So we're only gonna work with a limited number of people. And as I think about who this is for, um, it's for you if you're a veteran in the medical market and you really wanna take that quantum leap, or maybe you've always thought about being in the medical market, but you want to avoid the steep learning curve, you know that, yeah, I need to do digital sales funnel, but it all seems so overwhelming. Um, if you want to take the most direct path for success or position yourself as the go-to expert, um, this is really not for um, people who are uncertain about whether they want to work with doctors. If they're looking for like a do nothing campaign, just, you know, send me doctor leads. I want to pay for leads or you're a hobbyist. You just kind of want to tinker. I mean, getting doctor clients is hard work. I mean, that that is the truth, but you can do this in a smart way so that hopefully you're getting to that end game as quickly as possible. I very much want to thank you for your participation today. You know that you can always reach out and get in touch with me if you have any further questions or, or want some suggestions for what's best for you. So bye-bye for now.